Pretty excited about this one. Today I'm building a welding cart that I've wanted for a long time where I'm gonna have everything to run any process that I want all in one place. The particular machine that this is gonna be for is a new one by HTP. It's a multi-process machine that can run MIG, Pulse MIG, ACDC TIG, so it has all those accessories. Now in my last video, I sketched out a plan and made a shopping list, which I've picked up all the materials to turn into this cart. I'm gonna start off by cutting the pieces for the upper and lower tiers and then fit them together. Now that I have a little kit put together, I can start doing some rough layout before I actually clamp everything and fixture it in place. I'm just using this front bar as a spacer so that everything can sit parallel. Now if you don't have a fixturing table set up like this, it really doesn't matter. It saves a lot of time, but you can get just as good a result using a speed square and tacking things and then bumping them around square before placing the additional tacks. With one side tacked up, I'm going to grind the tacks down. This will allow me to flip it over and have the upper face sit on the table while I tack up the bottom side. Next I'll tack up the upper tier. This time I place the tacks on the side so I won't have to grind them down when I flip it over. When I moved on to these butt joints, it was set a little hot, so I blew a hole through. A little adjustment, and everything will be just fine. It's running pretty good now. Let's go ahead and put these tiers together. Now, the height of the second tier depends on a couple of things. One, I wanted to leave room at the bottom where I could fit a water cooler for a water-cooled TIG torch if I want to add that down the line. And two, I wanted it above that to have enough room for a shelf where I could put a TIG pedal and my other consumable accessories. So you add those up, that's how I decided how tall it needs to be. I'm using some pieces of my fixturing kit to hold everything square, but once again, you could just use a speed square on one upright at a time, place a tack, square it up, and place the other two tacks. You'll notice I'm welding downhill on the vertical joints. That's because this is thinner 16 gauge and it works out pretty well. With a MIG weld like this, I don't use a lot of side to side motion. I just stay up at the leading edge of the puddle. I'm gonna plasma cut a base to sit at the bottom of the cylinder tray. You could cut this just as easily with an angle grinder and a cutoff wheel. And this is going to be 11 gauge, which is about an eighth of an inch or three millimeter thick material. It's a little on the thicker side to be able to support those cylinders, plus the axle will run underneath it to add some additional support. You can see a little bit of dross on that first cut, but I don't have much on the second cut. That's because I was cutting a little bit too slowly on the first cut, but it cleans off pretty easily, so it's not usually too big of a deal. But if you have dross that looks like that, it usually means you're cutting too slowly. This is a lap joint configuration, and since the plate I'm welding on is about twice as thick as the wall of the tubing, I need to focus a little more heat on that plate. Rather than welding all the way around, I'm just putting some intermittent welds along here. I'm also going to flip it over and put in a few fillet welds down here in the corner. The reason for this is that I don't want that plate to just hang off of the center of the bottom sidewall on that tubing. I want a good joint into this vertical face as well. At this point I can flip it back over to install the axle. I'm just putting the wheels in place and then marking a location to drill a hole for a cotter pin and also to trim the axle off to the right length. If you have a hard time getting your drill bit to start in the side of round bar like this, it can be helpful to grind a flat. However, if you hit the center of it pretty well with a split point bit, I don't have too much trouble. The speed is off a little bit on this drill, but I don't want to change it just for a couple of holes, so I'll just deal with it. After getting four tacks in place, I'll just put an intermittent weld on one side and then I'll stagger it on the other side. 
Next, let's go ahead and build the shelf for the foot pedal and welding consumables. All right, well, I kind of messed this up. Let me show you what I did. So I was planning to run a piece of tubing along right about this height, four inches down to give me a shelf and also a place to attach my hooks for my cables where they wouldn't be in the way of opening the door to service the wire. However, I cut my pieces in the wrong order a little bit and I was planning to be so lean with material that that didn't leave me with two pieces that are long enough. So I'm gonna just change the design a little bit to put an angle right here and have two parts right here. I think it'll actually work out to be even better in the end, but not quite what I was planning on. Rather than putting the tubing in one piece at a time, I'm going to build it into a small sub-assembly, starting with two angle brackets, and then I'll put those together to form the whole shelf assembly. I'll tack everything together before putting it up in place. As I get into the welding stage of the project, I realize just how many different types of joints and how much weld there is on a relatively small and simple project like this cart. And knowing how to go into each of those weld joints with confidence, knowing exactly what to do for that joint configuration makes fabrication so much fun. But I've put together some online courses with a proven formula that walk you through step by step to be able to develop those skills. So if you are struggling to know how to approach each weld joint with confidence, check those courses out. I think they'll help you out quite a bit. Let's get back to the build. I'm cutting some shelves at a 14 gauge for the upper and lower tiers as well as for that middle shelf. I'll just make a straight cut with the plasma cutter and then cut off a little bit from each corner to clear those uprights. I'm going to use intermittent welds here on the side to hold the shelves in place without warping or distorting the plate. However, on the front, I want a full length weld for a smooth transition. I'm using a backstepping technique where I weld the last two inches and then the rest of it in two inch segments. Rather than making a plate for the casters, I'll just weld them directly in place, which means they won't be easily replaceable. Whenever you're welding anything zinc plated or galvanized, make sure to have adequate ventilation and wear a respirator to avoid any of those fumes. They can be pretty hazardous. Next, I'm gonna make a plate to support the cylinders. I could draw this up and have it laser cut by laser cutting service or cut it on my NC plasma table, but for a one-off, it's really just about as easy to cut it by hand. Let me show you some of the tricks I use to do that. So I've drawn out the outer border and then I've marked the center of the cylinders and I'm gonna use a circle cutting attachment here on my plasma cutter to be able to cut out notches where those cylinders will fit. After that, I've drilled a hole in this uh, combination square and I use that as an edge guide. This has turned out to be a pretty handy tool and then I can just move it over and use that same tool to cut perpendicular to it. This is the belt grinder that I built, uh, oh, it's been about a year ago on the channel. It's turned out to be such a nice tool. I'm really happy with it. I'm actually gonna make another version of this coming up. I'm pretty happy with how this fits on the cylinders and everything's sitting in place, but I need a way to retain the cylinders with some chain. I'm going to drill a couple holes here and then connect them to be able to catch the chain. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now I'm gonna make the hooks in a different way than I have in the past. See, on my original cart, I just bent some material around to make a J-shaped hook, and those catch on my pants and stuff all the time, and they really haven't been that good. So I wanna have a flat plate on the side. I'm gonna cut some little pieces of one-inch round tube, just two inches long, 
and then I'll weld those on the side with some flat plates on the outside so that they won't catch on things. It'll give me a bit of a unique look there. Rather than putting the hooks up on the top tier, I'm going to put them down on that lower shelf. That's going to give me clearance to be able to open the door and change wire on the machine. I'm going to weld together some one inch round tubing to make a handle for this up right there on that upper tier shelf. In this case, I just butted the tubing up without notching it. I'd never do this on a motorsports application, but here if I just put a large fillet weld on, it works out okay with a MIG weld. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and spray some paint on this thing and get it all put together. Well, it turned out really nice. I used some larger 10 inch wheels and some four inch casters so it can roll over things easily because I've never been uh, disappointed about having too large of a caster. There's a place for everything and everything fits just right. And I, I think this is really a result of taking the time to plan out the project before I put it together. I'm really happy with how that turned out and to have an all-in-one cart finally put together that I can use for whatever process I want. I really appreciate you watching and hanging out with me throughout this build. If you enjoyed this or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below or leaving me a comment. We'll see you next time.